From Minneapolis South High School, we proudly present another edition of High School Girls Basketball. Tonight, an intersectional matchup featuring two 4-1 teams that are hoping to play an upset card in their respective sections. The 4-1 Minneapolis South Tigers hosts the 4-1 Tartan Titans. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Beaton. Thanks as always for joining us. Minneapolis South, their identity, roughly the same over the last few years. Wherever the Hill sisters go, their trajectory will follow. Morgan Hill is senior, hasn't decided where she's going to school yet, but needless to say, she'll probably get a few offers athletically and academically. She's one of the early contenders in the state scoring race, already has two 30-point games. Last year, she had eight such games with 30 points or more. She may threaten that mark before the season is out. And Minneapolis South has yet to enter the conference portion of their schedule that will start tomorrow. The Tigers are on the front end of a back-to-back. -back. Minneapolis Southwest is their opponent tomorrow. The Tigers dropped their season opener to Creighton Durham Hall. Arian Kelly got in foul trouble, and with it being their first game of the year and at 9 in the morning, it was tough to gain their bearings. Since then, four straight wins, including Burnsville, Chaska, the Tigers are an underdog in Section 6-4A, as they usually are with Hopkins and Lizetta in the mix, but the Hill Sisters are going to make things very competitive. Tartan, we don't know a whole lot about. Stats haven't been up to date yet, but they are under a new head coach, Dustin Burgess, who you may remember from his time as an assistant at Tatina Grace, or if you go back a few years earlier, his time as a member of the Minneapolis North Polars. He won a state championship in 2003. Didn't have a whole lot to say about Tartan. He works at the school, so he's familiar with the team, but with this being his first year and only five games in, not a lot to go on, but he really likes the chemistry and how quickly the camaraderie has been established. It should, worth, it should be worth noting that the Titans at 4-1 have already defeated teams that handed them losses a year ago, and this was a Titans team already on the rise. They finished just three games over 500 a year ago, but there were no bad losses. Tartan, an underdog with Creighton Durham Hall and White Bear Lake in their section, section 4-4A, but they have a chance to be a sleeper when we get to the playoffs right now. It's about building some momentum and getting that chemistry to where Justin Burgess wants to be. Well, the starting lineups in a moment. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. Now it's time for the starting five with the Star Spangled Banner concluded. For the Tartan Titans, it's Katia Cummings, number three. She's a sophomore guard. Nevaeh Meister, number 10, a sophomore guard. Gabby Hicks, number 15, the senior guard. Izaria Chevre, number 21, the sophomore forward. And Kendra Ekareke, the junior four, number 23. Minneapolis South will start Jade Hill, number four, the freshman guard. Solana Cushing, number five, the junior guard. Maisie Johnson, number 20, the sophomore forward. Morgan Hill, number 24, the senior guard. And Arian Kelly, number 42, the senior forward. The Minneapolis South, as we noted, four and one. Lost the season opener to Creighton Durham Hall, a top 10 team in 4A and a likely favorites to win section 4 for a where Tartan resides. 
Since then, wins over Burnsville, South St. Paul, Chaska, and St. Paul Central. Not necessarily teams that would strike fear into the hearts of opponents, but a win to win. And you know, with South having the Hill Sisters and not necessarily the same level of depth, well, they're off to a good start. For Tartan, as we noted, slowly inching upward. They were a name or had some reputability in the days of Tia Albert, who holds the scoring record. Over 3,000 points and one of a select group of girls basketball standouts who scored over 1,000 points in a season. Tia will complete her college career at Fresno State. Since then, the Titans have had a few lean years. Last year, 15 and 12, but no bad losses. All their games were close, and they're hoping to continue that with Justin Burgess. On Minneapolis South End, Morgan Hill will not catch her sister for the school career scoring record, but she did surpass 2,000 points in the 84-61 over Burnsville. She had 33 points overall in that one. And Morgan Hill is going to be someone who shoots the ball a lot. She's averaging about 20 attempts a game. She had another 30-point game against Chaska. She was 13 of 14 from the free throw line. Overall, 94%, 31 of 33. And that is going to make herself highly attractive to college coaches wherever she goes. Although I spoke with her mother before the game, Morgan is looking at a school with a strong academic reputation, and there are certainly colleges at all divisions that could offer both athletics and academics. Abe is enjoying this. Abe, you ready to start this up? Oh, he's nodding his head. Abe, one of our camera guys. Another one, uh, let's just say, does not have a sense of direction. <laughs> now, Jade Hill, Morgan's younger sister, not as accurate of a free throw shooter, but she has scored double digits in all five games for the Tigers so far and is a reliable secondary option, if you will. Also, someone who, now in her first full year of high school as a ninth grader, is taking the initiative more often. Nate McGuire, the South Egg coach, told me he doesn't have to guide Jade as much compared to 7th or 8th grade when she would defer to Morgan or some other players. He says, hey, you can make some moves too. And Tots is going to do just that as they get the opening tip. Morgan Hill races to the basket. South up 2-0. Tartan almost commits the overpass. Meister is there. She'll hand it off to Katia Cummings. Over to Chevre. No stars for Tartan. Justin Burgess preaches unity, teamwork. Meister missing the three-pointer. Concepts, and that ball will go to Tartan, I believe. Yes, it will. Concepts that ring shades of conversations I often have with Colin Moore, the assistant coach at Johnson, who says the same thing. We don't believe in superstars. We want to build up the team chemistry, get camaraderie, and get folks to buy into the system. And when you're in your first head coaching assignment five games in, you, know, you don't want to be too specific or too picky about what you're looking for because Justin Burgess is on the same learning curve as his players are. They have some familiarity, Burgess, a staff member at Tartan works in the special education department. Jade Hill gets her own miss. Arian Kelly off the window and in. Arian Kelly, strongest at the mid-range game. Three on the way from Cummings, and that falls short. Offensive rebound and the putback for Ekareke. Kendra Ekareke. Try saying that five times fast. Tartan's lone loss this year came against St. Croix Lutheran. Oh, a nice back door, but Johnson was too strong off the window. Rebound, Chevre. Morgan Hill 
gets the poke. Ball still alive. Jade will retrieve it. The 10 second clock did not start, so Jay will get it across the timeline harmlessly. And a foul is called on the Via Meister. In the case of Tartan, they'll have a chance to make some more statement games or statements when they get to Metro East Conference play. Here they come in transition. It's Chevre. And Chevre makes it a 4-4 game. But Matamidi, a top 10 team in 3A. A strong contender to win the championship this year. Simley on the rise. Hastings off to a strong start. The Titans will have plenty of opportunities to make statement games as the year goes along. Morgan Hill has been working on her outside shot. She buries her first three-pointer, and it's 7-4. Morgan Hill shooting 43.8 behind the arc. Tartan looks to answer, and they will not. Meister with the miss. Morgan Hill with the rebound. Morgan averaging just under eight rebounds a game, but with South not having a lot of height at their disposal. Folks like Morgan have to attack the boards. Kelly missing the mid-range J. Tartan in transition, and they'll finish. It's Ekereke. Ekereke with a quick four. It's seven to six. High, low, high ho. So a lot of Cushing is on the go. Hicks. One of two starters on the honor roll. Cummings for three. Off the heel. Morgan Hill chases down another board. She'll fire the laser off to Cushing and Solana with another transition bucket. Cushing with a quick four. She averages just under 10 a game. Hicks dumps it off to Chevre. Hicks and Dejanay McKinney are both honor roll students. And it's Chevre out to Hicks. She'll pass it off to Meister. South not giving Tartan any openings behind the arc. Long bounce. And that's gonna be a foul on Kelly. Officials having a discussion, and they will give Chevre the shooting motion. Again, numbers are limited for Tartan, so we don't have a lot of data to go on. And that will change tonight. But when I spoke with Justin Burgess and told him it's my first Tartan game in about four years, he said, you gotta come over here and see what we're up, see what we're about. He's really excited with the start he's had for this Tartan program. And the St. Croix Lutheran loss, not a terrible one. The Crusaders can get some big wins. South making substitutions. Number 11 is in for the Tigers. That's Cameron Benjamin. She was not able to play a year ago due to an ankle injury. Shot, that was way off. Chevre missed from the free throw line. But Cameron Benjamin is one of the newcomers for South this year. She was on the team a year ago, but again, an ankle injury prevented her from playing. She had to get a screw placed in her ankle. Hoping to make a more resounding impression this year. She's averaging 6.4 a game through five games. Cushing for three. That's going to be short. And an easy rebound for number four, Aurora Roberts. Yeah. 
And the ball will go back to South. South, as you know, the high school where Taylor Hill first became a household name. She flew in from Washington, D.C. to watch her younger sister Morgan pass 2,000 points as Benjamin steps on the line. And still highly involved with her sisters and their welfare. And isn't afraid to pass along some tape to prospective colleges. Tarn, we talked about their history. Tia Albert, the school record holder in points. Another D1 standout in Tartan's history. Jesse Stomsky, who went to Wisconsin. Draining the 15 footer for the Titans is Chevre. 11 to eight in favor of the Tigers. Morgan. Sees a lane, goes for it, and gets the bounce. Morgan in the top five in scoring, averaging 28.8 a game. Depending on how her season goes, she could be a contender in the state scoring race. One of several, although she's going to commit the overpass. And that will be a turnover on the Tigers. Timeout is called. Timeout Titans, 13 to eight is our score with 11.38 left in the first half. As we noted, Morgan Hill, one of several 4A athletes who could be contenders in the state scoring race. And she has a good chance along with folks like Sarah Scalia because they're on teams that don't have a ton of depth in the starting rotation. That's not to say the supporting cast for Sarah Scali at Stillwater and Morgan Hill at Minneapolis South are inferior, but those are teams that are bound by fate to the success of folks like Morgan and Jade Hill. Emma Grothaus was off to a strong start as well. She has dropped back a bit in the scoring race. Of course, everybody wants to win a state championship, but the scoring race is often fun to watch. It's one of the few stats that people can keep track of. Tard missing. Cameron Benjamin throws it away, but a traveling violation called on the Titans, so not the greatest of ATO sequences on the part of Tartan. Tartan has a stellar history for boys basketball. Located in the inner ring suburb of Oakdale. Well, just off of 10th Avenue. And that's not a backcourt violation because it was an inbound pass. And Jade stepped behind the line momentarily. Would have been a different story if she caught it then backpedaled. Jade Hill gets a friendly bounce of her own. Rest assured, we're going to be here at South a few times. Although in the Minneapolis City Conference, the Polars could mount a challenge. They have in the last couple of years, but the Polars picking up some big wins as well. Morgan Hill missing the deep three. Gets her own rebound. Another three on the way. That one is long from number 10, Maya Ferianchek. A notable absence from the Tigers. Maisie Johnson comes up with a block on Gabby Hicks. Kiani Lockett played as a seventh grader. No one's sure why she moved to De La Salle, but her transfer there has caused quite a stir. And Chevre is hoping to stir things up for the Titans offense. She gets a fast break layup and it's 15 to 10. Chevre and Ekereke, the only two players who have scored for the Titans. Cushing, out to Morgan, pump fakes the three. Ferianchik, finds Jade. Jade, 
Comes up short that time. And that will be South Ball or Tartan Ball, 9.35 left. Cummings tried the long cross court pass. Maisie Johnson picked it off. Is she going to take it herself? Yes. Cross court passes always have a possibility of being intercepted. Roberts surveying finds Ekereke back out to Roberts. Number 11 is in for the Titans, and we're going to have a traveling violation. Number 11 for Tartan is Angelina Mims. Foul on Tartan. South going back on the inbound. Again, you can do that without incurring a backcourt violation. Johnson curls, finds Kelly. That's her sweet spot, swish. Kelly up to four, and the Tigers slowly but surely have padded a nine-point lead. Tartan looking to change that. They get a couple cracks on that possession, but they come up empty. And here come the Tigers. It's Jade Hill. Well, that's not going to work. Jump ball is the call. Tartan with the possession arrow. 7.59 left. South looking to make it five straight wins. Tartan. Looking to win five of the first six. And we'll be seeing this Tartan team again a week from tomorrow when they host Stillwater. So we'll get another look at Sarah Scalia and her quest to win the state scoring race. Tartan unable to get a friendly bounce there. Chevre missing the mid-range J. Morgan Hill, full speed ahead. Count it, and the foul. Morgan Hill, a beacon of versatility and grit. Nate McGuire didn't have too much to say about her. And only because what he would have to say is something that a lot of athletes are already familiar with. Timeout is called. Minneapolis South's lead has extended to 12. They lead 22-10. As we know to Minneapolis South, not a ton of games with which they can make a statement, uh, but they will get a pair of big ones to end the regular season. They'll go to Robbinsdale Cooper on February 15th, and they'll end the regular season against YZ as they have done for the last few years. YZ could be one of the dark horses in Section 6-4A. Uh, Hopkins has dominated that group for years, but a lot of folks have high stock on YZ's potential. And we will hopefully be seeing them in December at the Hill-Murray Tournament. With that being said, for Minneapolis South, the host Robbinsdale Armstrong in a section showdown. Duluth Denfeld, a school that stands out a bit. And all the Minneapolis schools picked up a couple of dates in their conference because uh, Fair and Heritage 
and Wellstone all merged with other Minneapolis schools uh, to make things a little more fair in terms of competitive ability. But that South North series, it's produced a lot of great matchups and when it comes to the girls, it's likely gonna come down to those two schools over who wins the conference title and the Twin Cities championship berth. Jade Hill steals the pass. Can't finish though. And Tartan will pick it up. Cummings. She loses it. Titans in trouble. Tartan swinging it around, but unable to penetrate south zone here. You see the 2-3, and a traveling violation is called. South's defense coming up clutch there. 6-0-8 left in the first half, and we see a few members of Como Park paying a visit. Como and South familiar with each other. Met at the Twin Cities game last year and Como likely going to win the St. Paul City Conference. Uh, nobody else seems to be even close. Well, this is a potential scouting opportunity. Morgan Hill left alone. She can't knock down the three. Can Tartan break this scoring drought of theirs? They've been stuck at 10 for a while. Hicks out to Chevre. That was Ekareke, I should say. And that is Angelina Mims. Once again, Tartan having trouble penetrating through that zone. Jade Hill with the steal. Cushing. Two on one, yes. Another turnover that turns into South Points. That's gonna be a foul on Arian Kelly, I believe her second. And free throws coming for Nevea Meister. No, that is the first charge to Kelly. I thought it was her second, but that's why I'm not keeping track. Two free throws coming. Again, for Tartan, up until that free throw, only two players had scored. All five of South starters have entered the score column. Meister getting the friendly bounce. Nice backdoor play, and free throws are coming for Maya Feriancic. An outside shooter, in the words of Nate McGuire, Feriancic has just 10 points in five games of varsity play. Doesn't see a lot of action. But that could change with time. This is Sal's first trip to the free throw line. 5.06 on the clock. And that is a lane violation. Cameron Benjamin entered too early, so that free throw will not count. Unfortunate because Feriancic got it, so she'll have to sell it for just one. Hicks to Ekareke and Morgan Hill. Right idea, but time did a little too late. She'll be hit with a foul. That's just her first, and Morgan, you don't have to worry about her fouling out of a game.
Tartan. That's Meister who drains the runner. And that gives the sophomore her first field goal. Stands at five foot five. Not the tallest person out there, but does what she can. And South looked a little perplexed, so Nate McGuire's gonna call a timeout. He was trying to get Jade and Arian Kelly back in there. They will probably sub in following the timeout call. And with 4.25 left, the Tigers still lead 25-14. For Tartan, we talked about some of their opportunities to get statement wins in the Metro East Conference. Matamidi, Hastings, and Simley look like the strongest contenders of the bunch. We mentioned Tartan will go to Stillwater. And they will also go to Robbinsdale Armstrong. So these two schools figure to have a few common opponents. Now we mentioned in the case of Tartan, picking up some wins against schools that defeated them a year ago. The two are Hudson and River Falls. They put up a bunch of points in their 82-65 win over Spring Lake Park. Kelly, Tartan fans wanted a walk, they didn't get it. Jade Hill draws the foul on Hicks and she'll go to the line. One and one. Now, Jade Hill, as we noted, not as accurate as her sister from the free throw line, just 61%, 14 of 23. So if you have to pick a sister to foul, that's the one to do it. The foul is the first personal on Gabby Hicks. But Jade is improving as the point guard. Taking the initiative, creating a little more, and looks for her spots more assertively than she did as a seventh or eighth grader. She missed the free throw, so an empty possession for the Tigers. Bullseye! That makes it a 25-17 game. Morgan Hill, back door to Kelly. No! Rebound Cummings. Tartan. Their call for traveling, and oh, that's unfortunate. That was the first three-pointer for the Titans. South, yes. Solana Cushing with the first tray. Cummings with the answer, bullseye. Three is starting to fall now. 28 to 20 is our score. Morgan Hill weaving through traffic and gets the roll. Morgan Hill up to 12. And Tartan almost lost it. They hang on to it though. Seeing a little more flow out of them. Cummings again. Maybe a heat check there. That's no good. But Tartan with another try at it. And they draw the foul on Jade Hill. The Tigers had three to give. So no free throws for the Titans just yet. That is the second on Jade Hill. Let's see if Nate McGuire takes her out. Well, doesn't look like it, at least not yet. Aurora Roberts subs back in for the Titans. Hicks, the long skip. And Meister fires the three. Will not get the bounce. Johnson tipped the rebound, but couldn't control it. And it will stay with the Titans. Entry pass deflected by the Tigers. It stays Tartan ball, 219 left in the first half.
Roberts for three. Off the heel. No good. Tartan, three tries, nothing to show for it. Kelly has it, but she swarmed and is fouled by Chevre. Kelly has not had many free throw attempts, just three of five in the early part of the season. But did tell me before the game that she'll occasionally call Morgan Hill Orange Mamba to make her mad. Morgan, not one for showmanship per se. Not big on the celebrity status and most of the Hill sisters have a mild mannered demeanor about them. No, Taylor was that way, Morgan, Jade, no, none of them are too keen on being a, viewed as superstars. They just want to be seen as people who made a difference. And Morgan Hill gets the rebound after Kelly missed the back end. Tried to go for Kelly, but Tartan deflects it. But it's still South Ball. Tigers officially three of five from the free throw line. Tartan just two of four. Not a lot of free throw attempts either way. Kelly can't get the bounce there. Missed the 10 footer. Less than two minutes to go now in the first. Three is off the mark. Roberts with the rebound. Cannot post up. Ball tips to Jade Hill. She's got Cushing on the run out. Cushing with a hesitation move and gets it off the window. Solana Cushing, her season high is 15. She's well on her way to eclipsing that. She's got 11 unofficially. Tartan trying to bounce pass. And a foul is called on the Tigers. It's on Kelly, her second. Now South still had two to give. So, not a dangerous foul or a costly one in that sense, although Kelly will go to the bench. She fouled out early in the second half in the game against Creighton Durham Hall. And no kickball is called, but it was deflected, so no backcourt violation. Roberts to Cummings. Chevre. The skip, and Tartan ends up losing it. 59 seconds left. We'll see if South decides to hold it or go for it with a 13-point lead. Morgan Hill with 12. Solana Cushing with 11. Morgan, spin move, goes up. She went for it and came up empty. Let's see if Tartan can answer. Cummings lines up the three, swish. Cummings is starting to get her three-point stroke going. That could be crucial for the Titans. 25 seconds left in the first half. South may elect to hold it. Benjamin not going to wait. She'll fire the three, bullseye. Cameron Benjamin with the first field goal. Tartan with time for one more. South had a foul to give. Cushing will use it. 5.4 on the clock, though. Still plenty of time. South trying to create that pressure defense. And look at number 10. Straddled the baseline, but Meister came up short. Had a tough angle. And the Tigers build a 13-point lead entering the locker room. 36 to 23 is the score. And the Tigers off to a good start as they look to make it five straight wins to start the 2017-18 season. We'll take a break and come back with the second half in a moment. You're watching high school girls basketball. Minneapolis South leads start in 36-23. Thank <laughs> you. 
And we're back, and everybody is here now for the conclusion of the Minneapolis South Tartan Girls basketball game. Mike Peden, I'm here all by myself talking to myself. That's chaos theory. Right, Abe? When you're by yourself talking to yourself? Okay, Abe knows what I'm talking about, and, and now he's subsequently wondering, why do I still put up with this guy? <laughs> anyway, uh, Minneapolis South leads Tartan 36-23, leading scores from the first half. Morgan Hill with 12 points, Solana Cushing with 11. Those are your notables for Tartan. A few sixes. And a couple of fours. Katia Cummings and Azaria Chevre have six. Ekereke and Meister have four each. And Angelina Mims also has the three-pointer. So for Tartan, they're looking uh, to get a bounce back here again. This is a team that has been on the rise, uh, slowly but surely. They've been inching their way upward. Morgan Hill out to Cushing for three. That's off the mark, and the rebound. Aurora Roberts. Pass is stolen. Morgan Hill. Is she going to go all the way? Yes, Morgan Hill. Fearless, I tell you, fearless. But I suppose it runs in the family. Three on the way. Katia Cummings with her third triple. And Cummings doing what she can to keep her Titans in this. South in trouble. Ball is picked off by Ekereke, and here she comes. Kendra Ekereke with the fast break deuce, and that makes it a 10-point game. So Tartan getting off to a better start. And South having some trouble here with Tartan's press. They throw it away. Titans have an opportunity to trim this deficit even further. Cummings thought about it. Maisie Johnson was there. So Tartan will swing it around. Now Cummings in the left corner. Still can't find an opening. South, they're small, but they're quick. So they'll take a 17-footer instead. Ekereke with the rebound after Chevre missed. And Arian Kelly's going to pick up her third personal foul. Arian Kelly started her basketball career at Washburn, had to play against Morgan Hill for a couple of years, was an opponent when Morgan got her 1,000 point. And needless to say, it was much happier to be alongside her when she hit 2,000. Morgan's not going to get to 3,000. Not enough games in the year for that. But to finish second all time in school history behind your sister, that's not too bad. Ekereke with some cleanup work. She's up to eight, and the Titans have whittled the margin down to eight. Tartan playing the press, South breaks it this time, and that's an easy bucket for Solana Cushing. Cushing up to 13, again her season high is 15. Cummings for three, off the heel. Rebound Roberts, and she will shoot two. Aurora Roberts. The 5'10 sophomore, she has not scored. The foul is the first charge to Maisie Johnson. Willie Taylor in attendance tonight. Doing some scouting. As, as he told me, 
He's playing both of these teams later in the year, and he gets Tartan as we did a week, as we noted earlier, a week from tomorrow. Minneapolis South will make the trek out to Stillwater on January 2nd. Aurora Roberts gets the back end. Nine point game. Jade to Solana Cushing. Now Jade has it again. Morgan for three. Off the heel. Rebound. Aurora Roberts. Heinz Meister. Cummings is calling for it. They'll go inside to Chevrolet instead, and it pays off. And the Tartan fans getting louder. 40 to 33. At press, working in Tartan's favor, Kelly, elbow J, cannot get the bounce. Another stop for the Titans. If Tartan scores here, don't be surprised if we see a timeout. Cummings, that would have been a big three-pointer. Rebound is tipped to Morgan Hill. And she's got enough speed to break the Tartan press. She draws the foul. Will they give her the shooting motion? That's the question. Officials say no. So side out for the Tigers. The foul is charged to Ekareke here first. Tartan, they are hungry. Stepping up the attack on defense. Kelly playing with three fouls. Fade away. Swish. Kelly up to seven. Cummings for three. That bounces over the backboard. Dead ball rebound to the Tigers. But you see Cummings less apprehensive about taking three-pointers here. And it looks like... Aurora Roberts is getting some work done by the athletic trainer. Leg may have cramped up. And Tarn having a good foundation, though. And again, with Justin Burgess and his experience, an assistant at Tatino Grace last year, their season came to an end at the hands of Matamida in a thrilling section semifinal in boys' hoops. Morgan Hill off the window and in. Inside the line is Ekareke, and that's no good. Cushing with the rebound. South has scored the last four. They'd like to add to it here. Jade Hill, just two points. She has scored double digits in every game this season, and three players tumble. Ekareke going up against Kelly. She knows what to do. Count it. Gabby Hicks limping off. I believe that's the fourth personal foul on Arian Kelly, and it is. Nate McGuire's going to have to take her out. Cameron Benjamin's going to go in. This could be a prime opportunity for the Titans, who have hung around trying to make their way back. Kendra missing the free throw, but she's up to 10. The first double-digit score for the Titans. Morgan Hill breaks through the double team. Jade out to Cushing. Three ball. Cannon from the corner. And the rebound to Chevre. Ooh, threw it into traffic. Tartan picks it up. Meister goes back door. Morgan Hill blocking Roberts. It looks like the ball will stay with the Titans, but Morgan Hill with a heads-up play on defense. Everybody stood still, proverbially speaking, after the whistle.
But we play on. Roberts to Azaria. Azaria missing the 15 footer. Double dribble violation on Benjamin. And Tartan. Having a sizable contingent. Well, they bring a crowd and with their basketball teams playing as they are, we could see a few more fans. Of course, there were plenty that came when Tia Elbert was here. Well, Chevre, that rimmed out. That would have been a big basket. And that's going to be a foul on the Titans. You know you're trying to get after it on defense, but you don't want to be committing fouls 50 feet away from your basket. It's just the second personal on Chevre, though. And the Titans. We'll have to try again here, but the Tigers looking to build on their nine-point lead. Morgan Hill, no good. Two Tartan players collide for the rebound. Roberts ends up tackling her own teammate, Cummings, and Chevre will have a chance at three. Tartan not going away. And as we noted, this is a Tartan team that may not be in the upper echelon in 4A, but last year, Kept it close with everyone they played. They will make you sweat a victory. The foul is on Benjamin, her first. And Chevre completes a three-point play. She's up to 11. And the gap continues to close. It's now six. The closest Tartan has been in this half. Johnson kicking out. Benjamin lines up the three off the mark and that's going to bounce off of Cushing and Nate McGuire is going to call a timeout now the Titans looking to clash with the Tigers they trail by as much as 13 the margin currently stands at 6 Abe what do you think of Tartan now he's liking it Now, Abe, who I often give a shout out to, the team photographer for Bloomington Kennedy, uh, you might see the South team again on January 20th. Because uh, not at Bloomington, it's going to be a neutral side event, I, as I believe, but the Eagles will face the Tigers. <laughs> and Abe is uh, looking forward to that one. Well, um, a few years ago, South and Kennedy had some memorable tussles when Taylor Hill was playing. I don't know if you were here for those, Abe. You were here for that one? You and I might have crossed paths then. It was back in 2007, I think it was. <laughs> About 10 years ago, I covered South Kennedy. You must have been there. I know Tony was. As you can see, I don't take myself too seriously. I am not afraid to have conversations with my crewmen to prevent myself from becoming delirious. 44-38 is our score. The Titans using a pressure defense to stymie South, and it's worked so far. Katia Cummings is heating up from the three-point line, and Chevre and Ekereke are stepping up as well. There's Zaria. She finds Meister for three. Yes! Meister with the first tray. It's a one possession game. And this was the Tartan team. I think a lot of folks were expecting. Benjamin with the answer. Three ball, corner pocket. Forty-seven, forty-one, and Jade Hill with the steal. Cushing catches up to it, but Tartan swats it away. South will have to settle for a set play. Johnson to Hill. Back to Johnson. Curls, kicks out. Morgan, you know she'll go after it. 
and she draws the foul. Morgan with just one free throw. Not sure if she'll reach 30 tonight, but she has plenty more games to threaten that threshold. She had eight of them last year, as we pointed out in the open. And Nate McGuire was having some fun with her about her shyness or her modesty and her penchant for 30-point games. Morgan Hill knocks down both free throws. 18 points is where she stands. So she needs one more field goal to continue her streak of 20-point games. Her lowest score this season is 26. Roberts on the line, but good for two. And that's the first field goal for the 5'10 sophomore. And as we said, Tartan will not go away. They're going to make South work for it. South is going to have to use some ingenuity. Jade Hill drains the runner. We haven't heard much of her in this game. On the other end, Meister Pure. Her second tray. She's up to 10. Five point game. Jade goes up for it again. No good. And the foul on Morgan Hill. South was up by 13 at the half. This is turning into a nail biter now. Hey, didn't anyone tell you not to text and shoot video at the same time? <laughs> Why are you sending a text to me? I'm right here. <laughs> but Tartan forcing another stop. They've got it to within three. And their perimeter game is picking up. Meister from the corner. That was strong. But Tartan on the cusp, and we still have plenty of time. Morgan Hill loses control and draws the foul. I believe it will be a side out. No, they're going to give her the shooting motion. She did attack the lane, and the free throw line is one of her favorite places to be. Loves to set up residence there. And who wouldn't when you're shooting free throws as accurately as she does? 94% entering this game. Had missed just two, and you know, even Elena Deladon will miss one here and there, but as we saw last week in the Matamidi Como Park game, free throw shooting is absolutely paramount to winning games. That was the fourth personal foul on Katia Cummings and Justin Burgess is gonna call a timeout. Oh, nope, Nate McGuire's gonna call a timeout. South has three remaining, but Cummings is gonna have to be careful and she was one of your athletes who helped Tartan reel in this deficit. She has three triples for nine points. It's going to be fun, though, to see what Tartan can do in the Metro East if they can play an upset bid. Now, in the Metro East, there aren't any conference championship or any bonus games like there is in Minneapolis-St. Paul. Although with the Metro East and Metro West, maybe you could have one, but you know, Cummings is out for now. She's going to have to stay on the bench for a little while. And it's going to be up to some other players to step in. Roberts can't hit it. And here's a moment for South to pull ahead and more free throws coming. If that was a shooting foul, the officials say no. That is the third personal foul on Chevre and a side out for the Tigers. 
Fortunate there, though, because if you put Morgan Hill at the line, that's almost automatic. Bullseye! Well, Morgan will take the three over at two. Up to 23. She had 12 in the first half. And stepping up, showing that senior leadership. Whoa, Zaria Chevre getting a friendly bounce. She's up to 13. Jade Hill, too strong off the window. Tartan with a chance to push. Chevre one on one with Benjamin. Chevre trying to behind the back move. It did not work, but Benjamin can't keep it in bounds. So Tartan will hang on to it with 8.22 on the clock. Meister, deep three. No good, and Roberts oh, volleyball that rebound. Needed more of a soft touch there, but it's not easy to do when you've got a defender on your back trying to box you out. And I'm not about to question the acumen or skill set of any of these players. They all would take me to school. Morgan Hill throws up a wild shot. Ball bounces around to Benjamin's hands. Cushing lines up the three. Swish! Cushing with her second tray. Justin Burgess calls timeout. South back up by 11. 59-48 with 7.52 left. With that three, Solana Cushing goes up to 16 points and attains a new season high. And Cushing likes to set up from the outside and has been a nice supplementary option in South's offense. Someone left a cell phone <laughs> in no man's land. So Solana Cushing with a new season high of 16. Not as accurate from three as Morgan or Jay, just 30% entering this game, but likes to line up from there and you don't have to be the most accurate three-point shooter to be effective. You know, if you go into the advanced stats, you don't necessarily see them at the high school level, but in college and the pro, they often talk about effective field goal percentage, where a two-point shot you know, is less valuable than a three, and they take that into account. But Cushing making her presence known. It's not just the Hill Sisters, even though they draw most of the attention. So Tartan, they're going to need some baskets and they're going to need them soon. Who's going to be a player to step up? Chevre, oh, tried against the double team, can't make it happen. Meisters saves it. And this is where you like to have Katia Cummings in there, but she's sitting with four fouls. Kelly also on the bench with four fouls for the Tigers, but... Chevre almost stripped, throws a fadeaway, and dead ball rebound to the Tigers. This is where you have to be efficient. You got to be efficient. And you got to be smart. Jade Hill missed another runner. She has struggled tonight. Cushing has made up for it, but Hill likely going to get a season low here. Hicks, we haven't heard anything from her. She'll fire a 15-footer and banks it off the glass. That is her first basket of any kind. And she gets on the board. Nine-point game. Morgan Hill sees a hole, draws contact, and will shoot two. That is the fourth personal foul on Chevre and Tartan 
not that deep. We haven't seen DeJounte McKenney take the floor tonight. And Kendra Ekereke is going to go back in. In place of Gabby Hicks. And Burgess is going to keep Chevre out there for now. Get deep roster, or deep bench available tonight. Morgan Hill knocks down both free throws. She's a perfect 7 of 7. Puts her up to 25. That will keep her in the thick of it for that state scoring race, even though it's still early. But on the other end, she hacked Aurora Roberts. And the sophomore is going to shoot two. Both teams now out of fouls to give. So we're going to have free throws the rest of the way. And what has been a quick moving game, relatively speaking, certainly faster than the Matamidai Como game I was on hand for almost a week ago. Dijanae McKinney and Michaela Adamson both listed on the varsity roster. Neither have played. Well, Tartan just having eight players on their varsity bench. And those eight players have done quite well. They get the steal. Meister is trapped and was hit on the head. Bailed out because Meister is going to shoot free throws. We are in the one and one range, though. That's the third personal on Jade Hill. Meister with 10. Missed. And Morgan Hill is fouled almost instantly after getting the rebound. Depending on who that is on. Okay, that's on Ekereke, just her second. Let's remember, got a couple of Tartan players sitting with four. One of them. Katia Cummings, who knocked down some key triples. Morgan Hill continuing to pad her numbers from the free throw line. <laughs> Gets a friendly bounce there. Nine of nine now. There are only two misses. She was 9 of 10 against Creighton Durham Hall and 13 of 14 against Chaska. That is how brilliant she is from the charity stripe. You don't see too many players with that level of accuracy. A pinpoint free throw shooter. Ring shades of Annika Sogstad. Meister threw up a prayer. And Tartan having a tough time finishing down low. Roberts draws the foul, and that might be what Tartan needed. They had three chances from short range. And Justin Burgess having a discussion with the official. But I don't think he's going to like the lack of efficiency finishing down low there. Fouls on Johnson are second. And even though this gets Tartan to the line, and it's a shooting foul. I'm not sure the Titans want to make this a battle of free throws here because you've got Morgan Hill on the other end. Roberts, two of four prior to this trip. And she remains at 50%. Tartan with the O board, though. They trail by 11. They got to get some points. Jade Hill with the steal. She finds Maisie Johnson on the outlet. No good. Cushing is there for the cleanup. Cushing up to 18. And another foul. That's on Jay. That's going to be her fourth. And if you're Justin Burgess, you wonder. When do you put back Cummings? 
Well, Chevre has four, but Wendy, a sub coming back in. Well, that's a tough question. Chevre missing the free throw. She's now just one of four, and it's been tough for the Titans at the free throw line. And some of the up and coming teams struggle with those types of fundamentals early on. Roberts missing the three. And Benjamin could not stay in bounds, so the Titans get another gasp of air here. And they did work this deficit down to three. So it's not like they were completely outmatched, but efficiency has not been on their side tonight, especially at the free throw line. Now it's not the time to be tentative, though. Angelina Mims was open for a three for a moment. That's going to be a traveling violation as Meister tried the Euro step. And here comes Katia Cummings with 4.43 left. If Tartan has anything left, it's got to come now. And Justin Burgess is going to take that chance. Jade Hill also sitting with four, has to be careful. We have not seen Arian Kelly. Uh, her presence hasn't been needed with South managing this lead. A uh, nice backdoor play. Johnson gets the friendly bounce. Jade Hill with a dime, that might be enough. Does Tartan have anything left? And it looks like they're worrying out here. Morgan Hill with the rebound. She'll bank it in. Timeout, Tartan, but South is gonna hang on for their fifth straight win. Morgan Hill with 29 points. We'll see if Nate McGuire keeps her in there to make another run at 30. But her average was 28.8. She's been working. It's a fitting song choice from Tony Stewart, the assistant athletic director. Even if the song uh, devolves into unintelligible syllables. Abe, hey, I think you've got a... Uh, yes, Morgan has 29. And she averaged 28.8. There was a fan who's <laughs> surprised at that total. And again, there's still four minutes left. Morgan will stay out there for now. We'll see if she ends up with 30. It'll be of little consequence in terms of the outcome of this game. But South, simply more efficient down low. And They've got a stellar free throw shooter. That can do a lot of things for you. Maisie Johnson almost got the steal there. And for Tartan, they'll regroup. And Justin Burgess, as we noted, has the attitude that every game is a big game, much like Colin Moore at Johnson. Whether you win or lose, you don't want to treat any game above any other matchup you play. Each one is an opportunity to learn. Cummings with their 4 3 pointer, and Tartan missed that. I don't know if there'll be enough time for the Titans to come back, but you got to like that three point stroke of Katia Cummings. Four triples, she has 12. Morgan, South. They're not in any hurry here, don't need to be. With just over three minutes to play. Jade Hill completes the drive. She's up to six. It's still gonna be a season low, but that's all right. Solana Cushing took her place. Oh, Ekareke hesitated. That's not what you wanna see. Cummings. Drew the foul before the shot. So free throws will be coming. Double bonus now for the Titans. So Tartan will fall to four and two. 
But as we said, this is a team that will have opportunities. Well, they're gritty enough. And as we noted a year ago, they can contend in a lot of games. Didn't suffer any bad losses last year, and they're going to lose by double digits most likely here, but they got it to within three, just to not have the consistency to keep up with Minneapolis South, but they're going to have plenty more opportunities. Morgan Hill was tripped up. Abe was going to call her safe. Nope, they're going to... Uh, yep, it is a foul. And that's on Katia Cummings. So Cummings will foul out. It's of little consequence here. Morgan Hill at the line. And that's her first miss. Or is it? Because Cummings has five fouls, so she has to be subbed out. Mary and Kelly having a word with Jade Hill. They switch the foul call to Meister. So Cummings will stay in. So that's what the stoppage was all about. Morgan Hill, 10 of 11. But that does get her up to 30. Jump ball south of the possession arrow. So Morgan Hill with her third 30 point game this year. And her box score reads something like this 26, 33, 26, 30, 29. And you can add another 30 to that. Morgan Hill again well on her way to lead the state scoring race. Uh, we have a lot of games to be played. Tartan still getting after it. South again gonna play keep away here. No need to force anything. Ariane Kelly will add two more to her total. And South takes the smart play and <laughs> Kelly was open in the back door and she's up to nine now. Tartan had their chances. But they had trouble finishing down low tonight and the free throw game left a lot to be desired. But they've got plenty of big games coming up down the road. Morgan Hill, how did she put that in? Harsh angle underneath, but that's what stars do. They improvise. Cummings, another three, bullseye. And that's something Tartan can build on for future games. Katia Cummings and that three-point stroke of hers. They'll get a winnable game on Tuesday when they go to Eastridge, a section opponent in 4-4-A. Eastridge dovetailing after losing a lot of seniors to graduation. And then they'll face Stillwater at Tartan. So the Titans should be able to bounce back against Eastridge, you would believe. South, content to run out the clock. Morgan Hill, encore, yes. Well, that was a textbook play in how you run out the clock. As lining up the deep three and missing is Aurora Roberts. So Morgan Hill ends up with a new season high, 34, Solana Cushing with a season high of her own. She gets 18, and the Tigers 
make it five straight victories as they notch a 78 to 59 success over the Tartan Titans. We'll try to get a word with Morgan and Solana Cushing before we wrap things up here at Minneapolis. You're watching high school girls basketball. The Tigers go to five and one. The Titans fall to four and two. And I'm joined by Morgan Hill and Solana Cushing. Uh, Morgan, I guess a little under the weather, but uh, if you're sick, well, you, you played sick. You were certainly <laughs> sick tonight. 34 points, a new season high. You had just 12 in the first half, really picked it up in the second. Uh, how did you help uh, fend off a hard-charging Tartan team? Um, I just got my teammates involved. I mean, we trust each other to pass the ball. We took way better shots in the second half, you know, it's like Solana was open in a corner and she passed it and we got a little six foot sh jump shot and just moving the ball around and taking our time really helped. And something else that's been helping you and this Tiger team out, your free throw accuracy. You've missed only three free throws all season. You were 10 of 11 tonight. What do you do to work on that stroke? Um, I just do the same uh, routine every day in practice when we're shooting free throws and just take my time and just the same routine. It just helps. So were you watching tape of Elena Deladon or your sister uh, during the offseason? Yeah, I mean, I see my sister in the gym when she was playing early in the season and just looking at how her work um, ethics are, and it just carried on. And speaking of, you know, this happened a week ago, but she was on hand to see you get 2,000 points. How big a deal was that to you to see uh, you know, the past and present of South High School uh, commemorate a big moment like that? It was really good. They came from D.C. They drove and surprised me, and I was just... It was just great, and I was just happy that she came. What does it mean to pick up your fifth straight win you know, and having to fight off a Tartan team that cut it down to three in the second half, and how does that give you some more momentum as you continue this five-game homestand? Uh, it was really good. You know, uh, just getting up our confidence and just playing as a team, it just helps us better when we get the W. Now, you requested that I ask a few questions for Solana, and indeed I do because you also had a season high tonight. Uh, you picked up 18 points, uh, besting your prior mark of 15, and you really helped pick up the slack. I know Jay didn't see a lot of action on offense, but uh, you really stepped it up. So what was your secret there, Solana? Oh, you know, sometimes just the transition buckets come my way or the rebounds come my way. Um, you just got to fin finish off the opportunities that you get. Um, so, yeah. Speaking of, how did you adapt to Tartan's pressure defense? Because they came out with that to start the second half. You looked a little perplexed by it, but toward the end you seemed to adapt. Yeah, I mean, just like having that connection with Jade and Morgan, other people that are passing to me, like know that I have to cut back door and handle the pressure differently um, and just kind of kind of gather myself because I know I had a couple turnovers early, um, but just got to put those out in your mind and keep playing. And how would you say you've uh, grown and matured as a player? You, know, you are kind of the third score, if you will, on this South team, mathematically speaking, but you know, from what I keep gather from teammates and your coach, uh, you are a highly valued member in the Orange and Black. Um, I guess trying to do other things besides scoring and shooting threes, like I'm not always shooting well and I'm not always like making layups or whatever, but I'm really trying to rebound, really trying to play defense well, get steals, just whatever I can do to help us win. And what have you learned and what have you uh, worked on since that season opening loss to Creighton Durham Hall that have, has allowed you to win five in a row? Uh, I think just team chemistry. We've played a lot more with each other. We have a better idea of how we're going to play, about how we're going to react to different things. Um, and that just comes with time. But we've really adapted and gotten better together recently. Morgan, you now have three 30-point games. You had eight a year ago. Uh, is that some personal goal of yours? Or? Yeah, I mean, it's always a um, goal well, of mine to keep my average up and just uh, get my buckets in every game. Are you trying to win the state scoring race this year? <laughs> no, I'm just trying to better myself before the next level until I get to the next level. Well, I guess we'll have to wait for that 40-point game. Salon, I think you, uh, she can get to 40, don't you think? Easily, yeah, yeah. Anyone you want to say hi to? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, hey! <laughs> oh, well, I don't know if her siblings are going to be happy about that. So what about you, Solana? No, no. <laughs> These two are completely unappreciative. I guess you are a real team. You don't say hi to anybody. You get season highs together. Say hi to each other. Say hi to each other. Not even your parents or siblings. I don't know. All these fans that support you, Twitter. Right there, you know, they're right there yeah, behind us. So. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I tried my best to give 
uh, give a shout out from these two, but you're going to have to uh, come to another game and try again. But congrats on the win. Thank you. More Thank seriously, you yes. And uh, we'll see if you can uh, keep this up. Thank you. Thank you. Morgan Hill and Solana Cushing. That wraps up our coverage from here. For our crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching High School Girls Basketball.